Now what to do? Oh, that's right. A bunch of new games. Well, I'm guessing I'm making a gaming pickups video then. That's cool. I like. I like when I have a clear plan. Don't have to think about anything too complicated. Just show the games and talk some shit about them. <laughs> Easy. What a day! What a week! Man, work's been killing me. <sighs> this weekend though, I ain't doing anything else except I'm gonna sit on my couch, on my ass, all weekend, and enjoy my new game. It's a shame I could only afford one, but I think I made the right choice. <laughs> Gonna have some quality time with Vin Diesel and the Furious Bunch. Talk about spending time with your family. <sighs> Whoa, that was weird. I just had the worst flashback ever. <sighs> Oh, that's right, gaming pickups. Hi. Listen, do I really need to make any kind of intro here? I mean, if at this point you don't know what these videos are all about, I'm not sure I can help you. Let's take a look at some new games I bought. I got myself seven new games, and two are for Nintendo Switch, and the rest are for PlayStation 5! Great! We'll start with the Nintendo Switch games, and the first game I got for Nintendo Switch is... Super Bomberman 2! Or oh, Super Bomberman R2, I don't know what... Where does the R come from? No idea, but Bomberman games, those are fucking classics, I've always loved Bomberman games. This one... It was alright, it was alright, I wasn't feeling this as much as the first uh, Super Bomberman R1 which came to Nintendo Switch, I believe when it was pretty much released, it was one of the first games for Nintendo Switch, if I remember correctly. But anyway, we finally got a sequel, and uh, it has the, you know, basic Bomberman shit, you know, there are levels that are kind of from top view or isometric view, you go around, you drop bombs, you try to destroy blocks, you try to kill your enemies with the bombs, that's all fine and dandy, I like that, but then, they added into this some kind of like tower defense mode or something like that. They are basically, well I can't even fucking remember. There was these five things you gotta protect and then there are these enemies who are trying to get there and uh, steal those, break those. I don't fucking remember. I actually, I, I probably played this like two hours and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm not feeling this one that much. Basically, they're trying to get to your base and do something those five things and you're trying to defend those. You kind of have your own base where you can put like walls and uh, cannons and shit and then you just try to drop bombs like you usually do to try to defend that. But I don't know, I thought that mode kind of sucked. I, I wasn't a fan of that. I like the regular Bomberman shit where you just go around, you know, you try to find all kinds of stuff and level up so you can lay down more bombs in a row, you know, stuff like that. The defense thing was just kind of bah. It wasn't really my thing, you know. I like Bomberman, still I think my favorite Bomberman is probably the uh, GameCube Bomberman that I had. It was that kind of adventure game. I really liked the story mode in that one. It was like an adventure where you were in a, on a weird planet and you were trying to, I don't know. I can't really remember, but there were boss battles which were kind of fun and uh, and there was just, you know, you were going around the world and uh, exploring it and uh, bombing the shit out of all kinds of enemies and rocks and trying to get you know, items and level up and shit like that. This was alright, but yeah, I... If, yeah. if I would've known how I felt about this, I probably wouldn't have bought this, but I did and you know, it's a bomber man. I'm not ashamed that it's in my collection, but I could've lived 
without it in my collection, if you know what I mean. I might still play it, I don't know, but yeah. Next game I have for Nintendo Switch is a Castlevania Advance Collection. And this one has a Castlevania game for Game Boy Advance. There's four games. Although there was a... Fuck, it doesn't say here, but... Uh, Castlevania Kiss of... Was it Kiss of Dracula or something? Because when you put this on your Switch, uh, in the menu it said the Kiss of something. Kiss of Vampire, Kiss of Dracula, I can't remember. I believe that one was also for Super Nintendo. It was really fucking expensive and rare. But I guess it was for Game Boy Advance too. I, I'm thinking so. The games that are in this, Castlevania, Dracula X, Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow, Castlevania, Harmony of Dissonance, and Castlevania Circle of the Moon. A weird part though, now that I'm looking at these games behind here, only two games were at the menu on the Switch, but I'm guessing two are named differently, because if I'm not totally mistaken, Castlevania Dracula X was just Castlevania. No, Castlevania Dracula X might have been the Vampire's, vampire's Kiss. I think it was Vampire's Kiss. Castlevania Circle of the Moon was just Castlevania. Well, either way, I tried the one that was just Castlevania and uh, seemed like a cool game. I died and it was game over one life So, you know, I, I just gave it like, you know, 20 minutes and I died I, I need to give it a better try, but I just wanted to quickly try I actually played this this morning for the first time So I haven't like really delved into this. I, I did give another one a try too I think it was Harmony of Dissonance. I'm pretty sure that was the second one I tried and uh, I like that one more uh, at First, at least, you know, first impressions were better for that game when I was playing it. In that one, I actually made it into a save room and uh, I also kicked the first boss ass, so I'm pretty happy with myself. I, I, can, I can say I played that game for good, you know, basically beaten, you know. I mean, what more is it gonna offer, you know, more bosses? Well, maybe they're a little trickier, but same thing, you know, they take more shots and... Uh, Nah, it actually seems like a really cool game. I'm definitely, after I'm done shooting this, I'm gonna go play it some more. I was really digging that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty fucking great. Apparently all these are kind of Metroidvania style. Metroidvania being Metroid and Castlevania, where you have this like one big area, one big map, and you have multiple uh, paths you can take, except you can't take them all right away, because you have to take certain paths to find some certain items and certain shit or spells or whatever the shit I don't know and uh, those help you get to the other paths or you can't go through all doors without the right key door and key here being metaphor for you know whatever the obstacle is you know if, if there's water maybe you need flippers I don't fucking know but you know you know the idea although I do have to say when I compare Castlevania games into Metroid games I kind of still prefer Metroid and Super Metroid, you know, those were fucking awesome, so yeah. Nintendo really polishes their games. When it comes to polishing shit, Nintendo polishes like I polish my doorknob. <laughs> I had totally forgotten I ordered this from Limited Run, but it's just one day I got a message that, hey, here's a package for you, and I was like, okay, I'll come and pick it up, and I went and pick it up, and uh, well shit, it was Castlevania Advance Collection. I, ha I, I think I now have all the Castlevania collections physical. First one I had the big collector's edition, the second one I think I had, no I had collector's edition for that too, yeah, but this one, I was broke when they announced this so I just had to go with the plain old game, you know, no collector's edition for me this time cause I'm broke, so anyway, moving on. Right, now we get to my PlayStation 5 games and the next game I have is... Another shitty flashback. The hell? Where was I? Oh, that's right. The next game I have is PlayStation 5 and it's Robocop Rogue City. Let me tell you, this is fantastic. If you watch my game of the year list, you know, top seven games of 2023, 
this made it. And uh, I talk about this there a lot, so you know you might want to go see that one. It's fantastic. Peter Weller returned as the voice of Robocop. Pfft, can't ask for anything better. Well, you could ask for the rest of the cast too, but uh, well, Sergeant uh, Warren Reed, the actor, sadly he's passed away, so they couldn't get that one. And uh, the guy who did his voice in this game uh, kind of sucked. Louis, Louis wasn't that bad. I think she was a lot better. The voice actor wasn't the original Louis. The original Louis is still alive though, so you know, uh, weird. I don't know. Maybe it was budget because this isn't a AAA game, this is a AA game, smaller company. But man, they. You can see from this game, they really loved the subject of Robocop when they were making this. This is kind of like Robocop 2.5 because it takes place between Robocop 2 and Robocop 3. It's got a lot of Easter eggs and all kinds of references to Robocop. Robocop 1 and 2, so that's great. And there's even some talk about the events that uh, have happened in Robocop 3, where the Japanese have bought the company and shit like that. So yeah, they do mention the Japanese here also. Luckily, no jetpack. Oh, well, it's a game, so jetpack would have been kind of cool in a game, but in Robocop 3, the movie, the jetpack idea was... It sucked, it was stupid. Well, the whole movie was kind of stupid. I still do watch it every time I watch Robocop 1 and 2, because it is part of the trilogy, so I have to watch it. I don't watch the remake though, so yeah. This was really... Uh, it, it feels like you're actually Robocop. You can constantly hear the footsteps, which is awesome. You can mute those if you want from the options, but... Uh, <laughs> who'd want to do that? I mean, uh, you'd have to be... Some kind of real fucking weirdo to do that. Uh, no, I kept the foot sounds throughout the whole game because they are part of Robocop experience. The authentic Robocop experience. Okay, they didn't sound like that. They sounded way better here, but it's got that like kind of little suction cup, but still like metallic clang. I, I love this. I love the footsteps. They're fucking awesome, especially in the movies too, but also in this game. Bloody game, gory game, you know, you can really uh, like blow people's hands and heads and dicks. A lot of dick shots. Yeah, just like in Robocop 1, you can shoot a guy's dick. And there's also some side missions. The areas or levels are kind of... Usually in this kind of smaller hub, there are a few levels that are in this uh, city area where you have a few side missions there, you know, you can do and uh, So, you know, there's a little bit of uh, adventuring in this too, in that sense. It feels kind of like uh, Douche X or uh, Thief maybe or something like that, you know, just the... Uh, hub idea and uh, how you can just go around there and it's all dark and you know grimy and shitty because it's futuristic Detroit. Although from what I've heard uh, Detroit might already be kind of like that. Not sure, I don't know, but uh, nobody really talks about Detroit that much these days. What's like the latest movie I've seen that takes place in Detroit? Well, Beverly Hills Cop movies, but they only did like their start of those movies in Detroit and then they got the fuck out of that city. Like fast. Anyway, that's enough bashing of Detroit. Uh, Robocop, this is fucking fantastic. I'm gonna continue. Next game I have is for PlayStation 5 too, because all the rest of my games are for PlayStation 5, so I don't know why I keep saying that. It's a game I've actually uh, shown here before, and I even did an unboxing of the Collector's Edition, you know, a few years ago. Death Stranding! But this is the director's cut. Yeah, I, I was missing this and it was cheap on Black Friday, so I got it. Because I really loved the game. It was a fantastic game. A lot of walking. People always give it shit about, you know, the whole walking thing. But people really need to walk more. Keeps you in shape and shit. You know, it's good for your mental health too, you know. Take those uh, mental health power walks or whatever. So, you know, fuck. Walking's good. Play Death Stranding. I ain't saying substitute your daily walk to this game, but uh, play this, it's great. And walking's good for you. You know, you go around, you're kind of this post-apocalyptic postman who's delivering everyone's shit to them, you know, by walking around this post-apocalyptic place where there are post-apocalyptic ghosts and shit. You gotta watch out for those while you're delivering your post-apocalyptic mail and packages and shit. I actually reviewed this game too, you know. Loved it. One of my favorite games of that year, you know. It wasn't number one. I don't remember which which place it took then, but uh, it was in top five. Yeah, it had to be. Now this one has all kinds of extra shit, so you know, I just always kind of wanted this, just in case I want to play this again. Uh, I kind of want to play this again, but 
the same time there are so many games I haven't played you know any version out of so it's mostly the matter of how I want to consume my time how I want to divide my free time you know what do I want to do during my spare time I might play this I might play this who knows who knows but I got it again Death Stranding I do recommend Hideo Kojima genius shit right on the toes well, if it doesn't work anymore, I'm playing something else. Next game I have is... Or games, because this is a collection and uh, more Hideo Kojima, because I got... Metal Gear Solid 1. Uh, Me Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. This one has Metal Gear Solid 1, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, and Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, which is one of my all-time favorite games. It's fucking fantastic. Uh, this one also has the NES Metal Gear games. It has Metal Gear and Snake's Revenge, which were released out here in the West, and the real Metal Gear games, which were made by Hideo Kojima, those are here too. They were only released for Famicom, which were Metal Gear and... I think it was just Metal Gear 2. Uh, was Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake or something? I don't remember, but you have those here too. I, I actually played a little bit of the Metal Gear uh, 1, the Famicom, the Hideo Kojima Metal Gear, and uh, it's pretty similar than the one we got out here in the West, but I'm, I, I've heard that the second one is totally different, so you know, the, the stories makes more sense if you play those uh, Famicom versions instead of the Western versions. I, I mean, the stories, they go more with these three. Anyway, so since I got this collection, I was like, yeah, you know, maybe it's time I get back into Metal Gear games, because it's been fucking years since I last played this. Metal Gear Solid 1, played it, loved it, but pff, it is PlayStation 1 game, so it kind of shows, and uh, uh, it was still great, it was still great, but it, it didn't have the same impact as back then, you know, it was, back then it was masterpiece, it was the best game ever made, pretty much, almost. Now it it shows its age, especially that one uh, boss fight where you're fighting Psycho Mantis, who is one of the coolest boss fights ever, one of the coolest bosses ever in any games. But the dramatic moment after you beat him, he takes his uh, gas mask off. And I remember as a kid, I was like more shocked the way he looked under that mask, you know, like, oh shit, that's gruesome. What is wrong with his face? It's like someone put out a fire with a rusty fork. Oh! Anyway, now I was kind of looking forward for the same scene. And once it, once it came, well, the face is just kind of different colored pixels. So it's, and uh, it's just kind of mushy. It's, it's not really that detailed. You can kind of tell that he has some kind of scar here and uh, the face is supposed to be more fucked up than they could deliver with those graphics back then, but yeah, it's it's not as shocking. It was actually kind of lame. It was kind of disappointing this time, but still, I played through it. Fantastic game. Loved it. Loved it. Oh, the goddamn when you're trying to snap someone's neck, that still sucks. I remember it sucked ass during PlayStation 1 era. It was just so hard compared to 2 and 3. Most of the time when I did try to, you know, kind of grab someone and snap their necks, Snake ended up, you know, kind of throwing them. Or I, I just ran into the enemy and got a fucking alert and uh, yeah, it fucking sucked. Well, this is the exact same copy, so it still fucking sucks ass, but uh, you, you learn to live with it, you know, because the game's so good, so you know. Fucking fun game. Fantastic. I love it. I loved it. I started Metal Gear Solid 2 and uh, I haven't even made it to... Well, well, I'm next I'm going to Fat Man, who's the first boss in the oil plant. Whatever. I think it was oil plant or something. I played through the ship part. That one works way better these days, you know, mechanically. It is just... The story, though, in the second one, I do love it, but it's... Well, now I'm kind of understanding more of it than as a kid, you know. That Back then it kind of went whoosh. And I played that game through, like, probably over 100 times, because there were, like, days when I just ran through it, like, twice, maybe even three times at best days. I fucking loved the game. It, it was a great game, but the story was just fucking out there. Now I kind of get more about the story, but uh, still not making, like, 100% sense, and I'm not too far, so I'm, I'm sure it'll get muddier as I advance, but yeah. I'm gonna play through Metal Gear Solid 2, and, uh, of course, I'm gonna play through Metal Gear Solid 3. 
at some point too. Let's just hope there's gonna be Master Collection Vault 2, which has, uh, you know, Metal Gear Solid 4 and uh, Peace Walker and uh, Metal Gear Solid 5. Phantom Pain and also the was it Ground Zero or what the kind of prequel part for that or or the kind of uh, it was like its own separate little game little intro for the Metal Gear Solid Five because Metal Gear Solid Five even though it gets a lot of shit because well Konami was kind of up in Kojima's ass you know make it faster and shit because he likes to take his time with all the details and shit so it wasn't as polished but it was still when it comes to just pure sneaking I think Metal Gear Solid 5 is still to this day the best sneaking uh, simulator out there. There's nothing better. So yeah, I do love that. But Metal Gear. Next game I got is <sighs> This is it. Tonight is the night. I'm losing my virginity. <sighs> I can't believe I didn't think of this before. I didn't know you could order a bride through mail. That's awesome. And she's hot. She looks like a supermodel. Whew. Ah. I gotta calm down. I can't freak her out. I mean, she did come all the way from Thailand, so... <sighs> Let's boogie. So that's what lady boy means. I thought it was like, oh boy, what a lady. <sighs> what is up with these fucking awful flashbacks? God damn it. I've, I've gone through all the worst things that have ever happened to me during my lifetime. Oh, oh it's been awful. <sighs> anyway, um, ugh. next game I have is for PlayStation 5, like all the rest of my games, and it is a game called uh, Corves. Corves. Chorves? I'm pretty sure this game was meant to be Chorus. Chorus. Uh, C H O R U S. I'm pretty sure while I played this game, they mentioned Chorus. So why the fuck would they write it with a V on the cover? I... I, I don't know. I... No idea. But uh, they went with it, so it's Corpse. Anyway, this is a flying game, a space combat game, pretty much. Uh, you're in a little ship of yours and uh, you fly around and shoot all kinds of bad guys. And there is some story here. Uh, your main character is called Nara, who has some, you know, like uh, some kind of powers. So she's a better pilot than just regular people and shit like that. And uh, I didn't play this much, so I'm really not that far into the story. So I don't really know what, what's going on that good. But there are some bad dudes and uh, there's some better dudes and uh, and apparently the bad dudes are thinking of invading the Not so bad dudes and uh, well it says here she was once the circle's deadliest warrior and now She's their most wanted fugitive as Nara and her starfighter forsaken Journey across the galaxy to unite resistance forces against the circle and free the universe from oppression circle is some kind of uh, weird evil cult or something like that and uh, it's kind of pretty basic uh, story you know uh, evil beings trying to take over the world or universe in this case it was all right it was all right it wasn't bad you know what i played uh, so far uh, i need to really go back to this and give it some better go I, I i played the first mission and i played a little after that i did a couple of side missions and shit like that and uh, i was you know i was enjoy i do like my space combat games i like flying games Overall, although I do kind of prefer my flying games being more like fighter jet games like Ace Combat and games like that, but uh, Space Combat is fucking awesome too. I do love some Space Combat games. 
so you know, I am into this, but uh, this was alright, it wasn't anything mind-blowing, seems like it's quite challenging, so you know, we'll have to see, we'll have to see once I get more into this, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think this was one of the bigger games Sony was uh, marketing when they were releasing PlayStation 5, you know, this was one of the first games that came for the system that apparently didn't come for PlayStation 4. It, I'm not totally mistaken. I could be wrong, but um, I could be right too. You know, that shit happens too sometimes. Not too often, but hey, I get my moment. So yeah, there was really like nothing special that blew me away or anything. It was just a solid uh, space combat game as you know, so far, so maybe the story will pick up a little more. It was kind of interesting, but it didn't like draw me in like, I gotta play this right now, all the way through. Corvs! Corvs? One or the other. Uh. And we're down to my last game and... Oh! Not another terrible flashback! Oh. Flashback 2, limited edition. <sighs> Well, speaking of disappointment of the year, I mean, fuck! I was really looking forward for this. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the original flashback game for Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, you know, all those systems it came back then. I have the first flashback for Nintendo Switch too, you know, I haven't tried that. I, I think I might actually give that a go, because it's been like, you know, 20 years since I last played flashback, something like that. But I went to store and, uh, you know, I was browsing the games and I was like, oh, flashback too, it's finally out! Because I had heard, you know, rumors that they were making another flashback. I, I had no idea it had come out. So yeah, I bought it and I was so fucking excited. I was like, God damn it, this is awesome, new flashback game. Even looking at the cover, it kind of looks like it's the same type of, you know, side-scrolling 2D Prince of Persia type controls uh, adventure action game with heavy sci-fi theme. <sighs> Even back here, it, it looks like it's, you know, those side-scrolling 2D thingies, you know, where you go around and shoot people from 2D perspective. But okay, first of all, this isn't a 2D game, you know, it's a 3D, you know, you can go towards the screen and out of the screen too, you know, there's, it's kind of like this isometric view most of the time where you just run around and, uh, you know, move like you do in isometric view fucking games. Well, first of all, the gameplay is, it's just kind of sticky and uh, it's not good. It's just so clumsy, you know, it's not really like fun to play. It was all right. I was thinking, you know, I I'm gonna fucking beat this game still, because why not? And there's little driving sections where you go around uh, in your little uh, motorbike. There's like three cities or three uh, stops where you can go. And uh, yeah, you drive between those and uh, the driving's uh, it's not good, it's real uh, kind of lazy and uh, feels like kind of, I don't know, like you're a truck or nice or something like that. It's, it's just not good, but uh, then again, the driving's mostly just moving between the cities. So were there like uh, bike stations, motor motorcycle stations, whatever. Once you make it out from the first area, it kind of opens up a little bit, you know, like it's it's got these different city hubs, you know, the three different places. Uh, city hubs and, you know, there are, there are apparently like like side missions too you can do and stuff like that and you, know, you go around there and uh when there's enemies you shoot those and uh the enemies are dumb as fuck uh which well you know i'm okay it, at least it makes it easy because there were there were a couple of times when the there was like alarm and the enemies were coming at me they were just standing there i i fucking ran around the enemies like circles i was like are they supposed to come at me or the hell. But yeah, then I just shot them and nobody did anything. First I thought there's a little stealth mechanic in this that when you kill someone and nobody sees, you know, they don't get all crazy because of that. But uh, nope, I just killed them right before the other enemy's eyes and all that shit, but nothing. They did nothing. They just kind of stood there. So I did few missions because you need to collect money in this uh, at the start of the game to be able to buy some kind of, was it mech or something? I don't know. I did couple. I played this like probably 90 minutes, two hours. Then I stopped and I came back to this. Well, my save was like uh, five, 10 minutes from the start. So I was supposed to play all that shit again. Although it would have been much faster because now I knew what to do, but 
Yeah, at that point I was like, eh, fuck it, I think I'll play something else. It wasn't that good. It was kind of shitty. This was fucking disappointment. It's from Microids. I usually, I'm looking forward for new games from Microids because they do like retro games kind of good. I usually like their games, you know. They did Asterix and Obelix games and oh, they did Toki, uh, the remastered or remake version for Nintendo Switch from Toki, you know, the ape who spits at enemies. Fun games. I, I love Toki games. So, you know, yeah, I, I usually like Microids games, you know, every game they make, but this was just shit. It was terrible. Terrible flashback. I mean, oh my god. Nice steel book though. I do like this. There's the cube that's got the like hologram, you know, it's like message cube or something. I don't remember, but uh, that's cool. That's cool. That's from the first game. So yeah, I'm digging that. Really cool steel book. Oh, there was also soundtrack. It's uh, digital, so I can't show that. So, you know, screw that. But uh, <sighs> biggest disappointment of the year. God damn it, they fucking ruined Flashback. I mean, technically there is Flashback 2 before. It was Fate to Black, which was third person shooter. Real clunky for PlayStation 1. I kind of want that game. I remember playing like demo version. I loved that back then, you know, but back then that was also kind of uh, clunky and stiff like shit, you know? But these days, well, it might actually feel a lot more clunkier and stiffer, so I might not even like that that much these days. But I think I'd rather give that one another try than this one. This is just not good, not good. I love the universe that Flashback had. It was just kind of unique and uh, it had really like these cyberpunkish vibes. They did it so good, you know, I loved the music and all that in the original too. Just the world, it felt so, you know, kind of colorful and uh, just so unique with all the different creatures and enemies and the story. You know, back then it was kind of groundbreaking when it came out, you know, the first flashback game. It, sure, the movements were from Prince of Persia, so they were kind of, you know, well, it had great animation, but it wasn't like the the most fluid movement, but everyone fucking loved that back then still, you know. And one other gripe I have with this game is this one has Conrad, who was the main character in the first flashback game, but from what I remember from the first flashback game, he kind of, I don't know, I got the vibe like he was like in his early 20s at least, maybe 30s. He just kind of seemed like this bit manlier dude. Well, here he's a fucking teenager who's annoying as fuck. And I could have still taken it and played through this if this was any good. The gameplay department and, you know, stuff like that. Or maybe the story would have been at least somewhat interesting. But no, no, no. It, the fucking teenage Conrad they have here, it's, it was just a final nail to the coffin. And that coffin was full of shit. Fuck. Shitty flashbacks. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm tired. I'm gonna fuck off now. I'm I'm miserable. It ruined flashback, so fuck off. Oh hey there, Ricky is here too. Did you have a terrible flashback too? Oh look, my food bowl is empty. Well, I guess I'll just die then. Nah, I bet your flashback was great. Way better than mine. <laughs> See ya.